Good morning, greetings from Heindel Motorcycle Sales, Eaton, Ohio. So we debated on even doing a video on this bike, uh, but we thought we'd go ahead and do it uh, just kind of as a cautionary tale to anybody else that uh, may be out there that uh, uh, does their own maintenance. As you've heard me mention before in other videos, I'm not trying to call anybody out, not trying to point any fingers or anything. Uh, you are, of course, you can do your own maintenance. So all you have to do is follow the owner's manual. Uh, but if you are going to do your own maintenance, uh, you always want to make sure that uh, uh, you go over the bike from top to bottom when you do do one of your services. Uh, this machine has, I think, 3,300 miles or so on it. Uh, so it would have had two services already, or should have had two services already. Um, let's define service. What is service? Well, uh, service is going to be more than just swapping the fluids and uh, riding on. Uh, there are certain fasteners and whatnot that need to be gone over on the motorcycle when you do the service. Um, you know, has this machine been serviced? I was told he, that the customer does his own service, uh, which is fine. Uh, so we went ahead and took a look. Um, you see clutch engagement. Uh, we have excessive slop in the uh, clutch cable, so I would say that that's never been adjusted. Uh, that's a service item. Um, and then before I ever start a bike that comes in, no matter what it comes in for, um, unless I just saw them ride it in, I always check the oil. Uh, don't ask me why I do this, but I always check the oil. Oil looks very dark. And of course, as you know, proper proper checking would be sitting on top here. So if you bear with me, we'll go ahead and wipe this off here on this rag. Wipe that off there. So that you can see. See, we're clear here. Let's stick the dipstick in. Pull it back out. There's your oil level. Uh, we are severely low. Uh, we are way too low. Uh, many a times we like to run them like right here where my thumbnail's at. Uh, anywhere in between the marks is of course acceptable, but we're definitely way down below the, way down at the bottom. Uh, keep in mind this is a 2018 and only holds two quarts. Uh, if I pour a whole quart in here, that means there's probably there's probably a quart or less of engine oil in this. Uh, customer dropped it off to have the final drive uh, replaced. It is under warranty. Of course, it's going to be a warranty item. Um, you know, you want to make sure you keep your your nuts tight when you uh, do your service on those studs because they will loosen up because you have to remember that final drive as you're going down the road it sets there and does this well what's that doing to that nylock nut well it keeps loosening that nut up in the stud and then your final drive comes partially loose and then the studs break out of the case uh, yes that's going to be a warranty item but uh, it's something that was likely preventable uh, customer stated he wants to ride it home well what do i do um we ask, you know, do you want it serviced while it's here? No, I do my own service. Okay, that's fine, but what am I supposed to do? Um, I'm not supposed to service it, but the engine oil is clearly severely low. So I can't just take and pour oil in it. Uh, you may ask, well, why wouldn't you just pour oil in it? Just add the oil. Well, it's the customer's motorcycle. And the customer stated he performs his own service. Um, I'm not supposed to service it. So it's kind of a catch-22. Uh, so what will have to happen is when the customer comes to pick up the motorcycle, we're going to show him that, you know, you're, you're low on oil. Uh, there's several other adjustments that, that need to be done under service. So when you do your service, now maybe he's just getting ready to do a service. Maybe it's been a while since he serviced it. Um, I don't remember, I don't have the key with me to see how exactly how many miles on it. I know it's got over 3,000, uh, so maybe he's just getting ready to do his second service. Don't know. Uh, but that's the kind of things that our dealership always tries to go through to, uh, you know, to, to advise customers on. Uh, I can see where somebody would be a little upset if their final drive studs broke. Yeah, I would be too, but if it was, if you didn't make sure that they were torqued and tight at the service interval... Uh, really wasn't a product issue per se uh, that it broke um, if you didn't do all the service points. So 
Moral of the story is you just always want to make sure you go over them top to bottom. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, mechanical equipment, so you can't have problems with it. Uh, so that's where we as a dealer, you know, we kind of get caught in the middle sometimes. Uh, you know, if a customer doesn't want something done, it's their right to say, you know, don't do this. And if we touch it, we're, you know, doing not doing what they said to do. So um, we get a lot of comments sometimes. People say, well, why don't you just go ahead and do this or do that? Well, if that's not part of what we're being instructed to do, uh, if somebody brings the bike and says, just go over it, do whatever you need, Sure, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we'd go ahead and take care of that as well. Um, but if they're saying, nope, do my own service, I have no idea what kind of oil the customer prefers. Uh, it's his choice to use, uh, uh, you know, whatever brand of oil that meets the proper specifications. So, Again, we kind of debated on even doing a video on this. Um, you know, it's not that we're trying to call anybody out, but uh, it's one of those things that, you know, when things like that occur, um, and we're also, this bike came from another dealership, uh, it was originally sold new, so we'll also check it out, yeah, okay, well, see, that that's the other thing that's always upsetting me, this is in the setup procedure, see how the shaft is turned that way, uh, you'll see the direction, we're looking at the end of the U-joint there, so we should go straight across, and we should be looking at the end of a U-joint there, and we're not. Uh, the shaft is, uh, what are we looking at, 90 degrees out, so that'll need to be adjusted too. Uh, so when we have the final drive out of it, we'll go ahead and adjust that too. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of them out there uh, that uh, aren't, uh, weren't set up properly from the, from the initial get-go, uh, depending on what dealership they came from. Uh, the dealership that this came from, I know where it came from. Uh, this gentleman, he had been in and he looked at this exact bike that we had on the floor and he ended up buying it from another dealer. Why? Uh, the, the other dealer sold it cheap. Um, you know, of course, the other dealer's now out of business as well. Uh, don't fault, fault the customer for uh, wanting to get a good deal, but you do get what you pay for, so... Sometimes paying a couple extra dollars in the beginning is uh, will save you a fortune in the long run. So, yeah, we won't make the video too much longer. Uh, I'm not going to identify the customer. Tried to disguise their uh, there's some identifying logo there on the side and identifying, of course, license plate. Uh, try to hide that because we're not trying to call the customer out. Uh, he's a very nice guy. I uh, appreciate having him as a customer as well. Um, but uh, just always want to caution everybody: you got to keep up on your service. Uh, well, we're talking about oil. Um, you'll see this here. Yeah, we were uh, had one come in with a seized up engine, uh, 2015. Gentlemen have been out traveling. Again, not trying to call anybody out on it. Uh, but if you look at this piston, uh, you can look at the heat discoloration here on the connecting rod. Uh, it is locked up. This is the grease out of the alternator. Uh, the alternator bearings uh, so that tells you how hot this unit got uh, what happened to it well when we pulled the dipstick out of this one after the customer dropped it off the engine oil was up but it was clean very very clean and as you can see the oil dripping out of it looks like diesel engine oil black as black so what happened well we're surprised that uh, probably traveling with uh, plenty of gear, he was doing a Transamerica Trail, uh, two up. Uh, There's a person in a sidecar and then him on the motorcycle. Um, so they were loaded to capacity and we're likely pushing it pretty hard. Of course, it has a deep sump on it, so we do have an extra quart of oil capacity but uh, likely just ran severely low on engine oil. And when you run one of these Ural engines low on engine oil, uh, just like the level I showed you there on that uh, 2018 that we started the video talking about, when you run them low on engine oil, um, you're going to tear up the connecting rod, uh, the, the rod bearing. The lower rod bearing is what will go. Um, they used to be a, uh, they were a Babbitt style bearing. Um, and I don't know might be able to show you what the material looks like when it starts coming apart um, but they if you know what freezer burn smells like that's what these smell like when they start going 
Um, if you look right there where the light's at, right there at the end of the rod, uh, you see that silver. I'll even point to it because some of you might not even know what I'm referring to. But we're looking right there, right where this rod um, meets the crank. You see that sticking out there, that silver. That is actually the uh, bearing material, lower rod bearing. Um, and you can see how hot that connecting rod has been. Very discolored. Um, we went and checked this out, scooped this, uh, looked down in there. You can see the Babbitt um, down in it, or what I would call Babbitt from the old school. Uh, um, we checked the block out. Has some serious concerns that the block is damaged simply because it got so hot. Um, so don't think the crank's in alignment anymore. So uh, this unit... Unfortunately, um, we're getting a short block and putting in it a rebuilt engine uh, that we found. Um, so we're getting one of those and going to put in the bike. So it's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, it does happen. But when you're traveling, um, you know, if, if it's a hot day and you're running them hard, um, when you stop to get fuel, after you fuel up and you're letting it cool off for a little bit, it's not a bad idea just to go ahead and check your oil because um, you want to make sure it's topped off. Like I say, with it only holding um, this one stock, two quarts, two liters, uh, the new ones are 2.8 liters, so they hold a little bit more, so they're a little bit better. But uh... Anyway, that's just a little overview here on a, uh, I'll see, today's a, I don't even know what today is. Anyway, we're in here getting some service projects caught up. It's over the weekend, so. We'll eventually release this video, probably wait till after the customer picks up the motorcycle, simply because uh, we want everything taken care of. Heindel Motorcycle Sales, Eaton, Ohio. As always, appreciate you guys watching. Definitely like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think. If you want to yell and scream at me, have at it. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you want to give me some good compliments, uh, go ahead, right ahead in the comment section. Thanks for watching.